the Seven Seas Explorer. Oh, wow. Oh, look at this, Michael. A very warm welcome on board the most luxurious ship ever built. It just reeks with luxury around here. At £8,000 a night for the most expensive suite... Oh! Pop. $150,000 bed. I mean, it's just ridiculous. It offers elite travellers the most exclusive holiday at sea. There is no no. Mm. You're never going to hear the word no. Now, they've allowed cameras on board. It's a little bit of pressure right now <laughs> for everything. ...of this floating palace. Guys, we are getting busy now. Get ready. Where's the fish? Fish, fish. What does it take to run a six-star hotel at sea? You know, everything has to be perfect. It's about pride and love. But is it all plain sailing? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Can staff cope with the pressure of providing perfection? Okay, make it nice. Look. Look how it looks like. Let's go. They get our wedding. They've got the best hotel in the world, and it moves with you. So come on board. Absolutely stunning. As we discover... <laughs> if the cruise ship can live up to its reputation. The pressure's on all the time. That's the biggest challenge. The world's most expensive cruise ship is sailing through Northern Europe and the Baltic Sea, approaching its penultimate destination, St. Petersburg in Russia. For many passengers, it's the highlight of the cruise. But for region's most loyal guests, there's another highlight in store. Those who have spent over 75 nights on region's ships are being treated to an exclusive caviar buffet. Morning, morning. How are you? Right. Good, good, good. They'll be able to tuck into thousands of pounds worth of caviar and enjoy over 300 decadent canapes. It all means an early start for the kitchen team. Service, pick up, let's go. Special order on the left. And this, I cannot use, so you take this away, please. Uh, keep the standards, huh? Yes, sir. In charge of the elite buffet is general manager Massimo. Good morning, sir. Well, this one is perfect. Good morning. Uh, this morning we have uh, two ladies, one of them saved uh, 525 nights, and another one is very close to 1,000. And when you're entertaining the most travelled and demanding guests on board, the pressure to succeed is immense. Okay, five minutes, huh? Yes, chef! Hi, we're almost ready, yeah, up here. We need to be on top of our game to make sure that everything is uh, as per our standards. Uh, we just need to do one simple thing, just to exceed their expectations. With the buffet set and the ice sculpture in place... We look good. Yeah, perfect. There's just one thing, or person, missing. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I think that's quite funny, actually. Mr Bean moment. Cruise director John is supposed to be hosting. Good morning, good morning, sir. How are you? Thank you, and you? Very good, thank you. But he's got caught up chatting with other guests. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Great. Very good. Have a good day. You're colour coordinated. I know, we didn't realise that. Yeah, amazing. <laughs> they did. They had it put out the night before. Pressed and ready to go. <laughs> With guests beginning to arrive at their exclusive event, John turns up just in the nick of time. <laughs> bit bleary eyed. Yeah, how are you this morning? I'm great. Thank you so much for joining us today. We always check how late is John. Yeah. And, uh, in order to start the party. And, uh... Yes. Early is on time. <laughs> on time is late. <laughs> and late is not acceptable. <laughs> so I'll be fired by yeah. five o'clock. Good morning. Good morning. Nice morning. Well. Now with a host, the VIP event can officially begin. Thank you for joining us for the most exclusive cocktail party 
on the Explorer. With guest expectations sky high. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Will the caviar buffet be a success? You don't have to be a regular to enjoy perks on board the Seven Seas Explorer. Very good morning, Mr. Gonzalez. This is a butler. I'm assisting you. If you spend around £1,500 a night, you can stay in a suite that comes with the luxury of its very own butler. Butler service. Good evening. There are 12 butlers on board the Explorer, covering almost 100 cabins between them. Morning, butler service. Prakash, I'm assisting you. And they're on call 24-7. I'm great. How about you, sir? With anything from room service... Hello, Mr. Archon. How are you? Oh, lovely. I'll take care after you, sir. Thank please. you. ...to pouring drinks and even delivering chocolate fountains. Cheers. One appetite. Thank you very Thank much. You don't even have to think about, oh, what do I do now? Am I, where am I going to go? My idea of luxury is not having to think about anything and for somebody to think for me. Our butler takes care of all that. Because if I want something at 2 in the morning, I could call and get anything I want. I love the butler. I would take the butler home with me. I would. I think he's fabulous. He smiles. This particular one? All of them, to be fair. Oh, OK. A butler is one of the most important roles on the ship. So when it's your first day, the pressure is on. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Due to a family emergency, head butler Raju is a team member down. So he's had to fly in Glen all the way from India. Welcome, uh, butler Glen. Welcome to the most uh, luxurious ship ever built. Glen is a butler with six years' experience at five-star hotels in Mumbai. But he's never stepped foot on a ship before. So I just need your help and support throughout because that's what I need. Gaurav, he's going to be your uh, buddy. So for the next uh, few weeks, you'll be very close to him. On board a ship of this stature with hugely expectant guests, new staff have to hit the ground running. The first couple of days is uh, very, very crucial, uh, especially for the first timers. Uh, you see there's so much happening all around the ship that you get lost. Thank you. If Glenn doesn't perform, he risks losing his job before it's even begun. To be honest, if I think he's not uh, ready, then I might have to stick with the same, uh, you know, the same system what we are doing now. We need to keep these standards. It can never drop. At the special VIP event, Region passengers are tucking into an exclusive buffet. All the food and drink on offer is worth more than £5,000. And no wonder all the stops are being pulled out. Loyal guests Andy and Laurie have a combined spend with Regent over £1 million. Between them, they've spent almost 1,400 nights on board. And in that time, they've picked up some tricks of the trade. I'm doing the stealth caviar in the teeth check. When you dine on region and have luxuries like this, you have to watch it. In the combined four years they've spent at sea, they've also managed to memorize plenty of answers to John's quiz. Are you winning trivia because you remember all my questions? A photograph of memory. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll never forget your favorite film. What? But yeah, it is. I know. Ah, oh, that's good, though. Uh, yeah, well. I'll have to change it now to Braveheart or something. <laughs> the VIP lunch looks to be a great success. Also hoping for success is new butler Glenn. It's his first day on the job, and he's shadowing Gurav, who's been a butler with Regent for nine years. I'll take you to deck six, where I'm going to start with my canopies. OK. Each day, butlers deliver canapes to guests in their suites. Yeah, it's five to seven usually, but most of the guests request before six o'clock itself. Okay. There's a lot of information for Glenn to take in, especially as he's never been on a ship before. So all the odd numbers at the port side. Even numbers are port side. Port side. Okay. And odd numbers are your right side. Starboard side. 
Glenn needs to do is keep up with Gaurav on his canopy run. But with a ship sprawling 14 decks, it's easy to get lost. So it's not good. Not good. Ah, uh, it's a bit confusing because you have to move right and left. You don't know where you're going. So I think familiarization will help me a lot. Ah, oh, not this way. It's not this way. But I think in few days' time, I will find out the way. Losing your way on day one isn't the best first impression. No, it's not here. When service has to be perfect. With over 20 sweets still to serve, Gurav is continuing to deliver his luxury canapes without Glenn. Awaiting their afternoon delights are Shirley and Jerry, who run an air conditioning business in Texas. They're staying in a grand suite, which will set you back a cool 1,500 pounds per night. Okay, great. This is our lovely suite and our bedroom TV that comes up when we want to watch TV. That's pretty cool, actually. Jerry thinks we need that at home, but I do not. <laughs> we have the most fabulous deck in the whole world. The outside space alone is as big as seven regular cruise ship cabins. Is this not cool? <laughs> big deck. As well as the big deck, staying in a grand suite gets you free laundry service, a personalized high-end drinks cabinet. OK, I'll show you our fabulous bathroom. And a few hundred pounds worth of luxury toiletries. Body lotion, shower gel, and eau de perfume. Restocked daily, of course. The only thing that left out was some KY jelly. <gasps> Oh, my gosh. It looks like Butler Gurav... Butler service. ...and the surprise canapes have arrived just in time. Got in some lovely canopies for you. Crochet bread, calamata olives, artichokes, and I'm sure you'll like it. Elsewhere, new Butler Glen is still lost. He's been roaming the ship trying to find Gurav. I think you went that. ...and has resorted to knocking on the cabin doors. Bottle service. And it looks like his luck might finally be in. So it's my I've never been on a ship before. Never? Never. No, never. So this is my first wow. time. Wow. And a you're new... going to be a butler? Yes. He's, he's, he's a butler. Uh, before, he's worked on, the, on land. On land. Okay. And okay. On the ship, but he's coming for the first time. He will be a very good teacher. He's made our experience wonderful. Wow, and I'm nice. sure you will have a great career. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you, Mark. As Glenn spends the rest of the day shadowing Gurav, despite a rocky start, he begins to settle into his role. If you're a butler, you have to know each and every guest preference. Glenn's also managed to familiarize himself with the ship's extensive layout. It's a bit of confusing, but there are ten different types of suite, but we'll be handling only five suites. And after a few days of work, I think I'll get back. For now, Glenn looks to have done enough to remain in his new job. But there's a long road ahead if he's to become one of the explorer's top butlers. There is a bright future on the ship, so why not take a step forward? The world's most expensive cruise ship has finally arrived in Russia. For the guests on board, there's excitement in the air. Well, whatever you choose to do, have a fabulous day out there in St. Petersburg, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sure the highlight for many of you, but have an even better day on board your Seven Seas Explorer. But as John heads to his office to prepare for the evening's entertainment, he's dealt a blow. John's entertainment act on the last night of the cruise have had to pull out. One of my guest entertainers had to go home due to a family emergency. The popular rock and roll Irish covers band were a guaranteed crowd pleaser to end the cruise. 
Will you do me a favour, actually, Dave? Will you sort this out for Sean? I always say it's not like planning a wedding, because, like a wedding, people spend years in the planning for that one day. And on a cruise ship, it's like that every day. This is the bit that the guests wouldn't see. You just go out there and make it look like it's effortless, really. John's got less than three days to fill the gap. The world's most expensive cruise ship is docked in St. Petersburg. Travelling with friends no. and family today? It's the hubby. Yeah, the hubby. <laughs> hubby works. Guests are heading ashore to enjoy Russia, and the 15 day trips are fully booked. Boiling, isn't it? Hot in Russia. <laughs> today, there's a new tour to try. We're going on a master painting class, painting one of those big Matryoshka dolls, which is interesting because I hated art at school. Will the exclusive excursion meet the expectations for high-end holidaymakers? John has been sent to find out. There's another Irish bar. I think we have seen two Irish bars on the way here. I have to arrange a crew tour. But the new tour doesn't immediately scream luxury. Who wants to walk around an opulent palace when we can walk down here? I wonder what that graffiti says. Yeah. Oh, it says vodka tasting as well. Suddenly I've got a whole newfound interest. No sign of vodka inside, but maybe the prospect of painting will spark John's creativity. So please choose the color. Pink. Pink? How do you say pink in Russian? I'm gonna Google it. Rosaway. 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 You just keep between the lines, right? Here we go. With guests experiencing luxury and opulence at sea, will this new excursion on land tick all the boxes? I feel like I'm back at school now, I'm bored. Back in the ship's atrium, with most of the passengers ashore, General Manager Massimo and Head Housekeeper Sunny are getting ready for one of the most challenging jobs on board. One by one, little glasses, one by one, uh, uh, wherever you see dust. They're about to clean the 50,000-pound chandelier. Ten foot wide and containing 6,000 crystals, it's a huge and delicate job. This is crystal. So we cannot use any chemicals, basically, because we don't want to ruin the crystal. They're very sensitive. So what we normally do, we just take a rug with a little bit of alcohol just to make it shiny. That's all. Tasked with the work is Oliver, one of the housekeeping team. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's like you're driving your own machine. You're going up and you do your job. Yeah. Uh, we will be here just to assist you. As Oliver gets strapped in and ascends towards the centerpiece, it's now out of Sonny and Massimo's hands. I am a bit nervous every time we do this because if we lose even one stone, it will show. It's irreplaceable. I don't even know how we would uh, replace it. One wrong move could mean thousands of pounds worth of damage. Slowly. Slowly, slowly, just section by section. Yeah. Don't lean across too much. Uh, the chandelier is the main feature of the explorer. Uh, it's very expensive, very delicate, very elegant, so uh, it needs to be cleaned, of course, but uh, we need to do it in a very careful way. So if Oliver applies too much pressure on the crystals, then uh, uh, they may detach. Hopla! Voila! You see, that's why we clean. Little piece of plastic. Staying at the top of the luxury cruise game isn't just about keeping up appearances or operating interesting excursions. 
Behind the scenes, the 88 chefs are constantly working to perfect the ship's cuisine. Aurelien is Regent's traveling senior executive chef. And like last time, we have some decoration. Well, I'm going from ship to ship to work on the new menu, new concept, to check that the food is good on board. Sometimes to police a little bit. He's working with Suraj to put a new luxury twist on a classic dish. Now we are working on a, on a classic beef tartare. Just the presentation is a, a little bit modern, where we use a splash of uh, pepper puli. So from something messy, we're going to try to make something nice. It's just a big spoon of pepper puli with a spoon. We smash it. We smash it. If I do like this, for example, you know, some of the guys smash it very hard, and there was no more cool, uh, paper cool on the plate, or break the plate. This one you can delete at any time. Okay, and you see a small one? That's you see? Coolie in place, they just need to complete the dish. 100 grams of seasoned raw Wagyu beef. What tools have you got here, Radion? Tweezers. Precision tweezers. Surgeon tools. Followed by one grilled Sicilian baby tomato. Now we're finishing the... Basically, we use a, the classic uh, tartare garnish, you know, capers, anchovy. Yeah, we're just finishing the, the plate. And last but not least... My special spatula. An egg yolk. Aurelian is hoping his steak tartare will be in front of Regent's elite passengers soon. Where's this picture going? On my Instagram, no. Who said Messi is not nice? In the back alleys of St. Petersburg... I've smudged her nose now. She could have the measles. There you go. <laughs> yeah, there you go. John's testing out a brand new tour for the Explorer. But at the moment, it's not setting his world alight. I messed up. I went over the line. It's not, it's not good. I might just put an Aston Villa kit on her for the rest of it. I'm kind of over it now. Thankfully, he's managed to find an assistant in six-year-old Benjamin. Well, you could put, like, one dot there and another line there. Oh, right there. matching it across. Yes. <laughs> I've got a helper now. I've got an advisor who's given me creative license to do what I want, really. It's not equal, but sometimes when you're ha having a bad hair day, one side looks worse than the other anyway. This is actually really fun, isn't it? Thank God you came over, Benjamin, because I think I would have had a disaster area, but I think that's all right now. Yes. What do you reckon? Thank you, mate. John eventually finishes his masterpiece. Oh, the PS. The PS de resistance here. I think my mother would be proud, actually. But what's the verdict on the Russian day trip? You know what? It was a really, really cool tour. It was very quaint. It was fun. It was therapeutic. I think it's a winner. In the main foyer, Oliver is still cleaning the ship's most impressive and expensive chandelier. Very good. Yeah. And he can now breathe a sigh of relief. It looks like diamonds. Having been quietly and delicately cleaning most of the afternoon, he's finally finished. Uh, you did all, all the sections, right? You clean it up already? You dusted it? OK, perfect. I think it looks really good. Very nice. We didn't lose any pieces, which is important. And just in the nick of time, too, as guests begin to make their way back onto the ship. It's always good to be home. As does John, who's straight back to the grind, checking the sports deck. Yeah, so you kind of have to check your areas of the ship. And I've, we've got this sports deck up here. But the more time that passes leaves less time to find a performer for the final night of the cruise. I think the biggest challenge for my job is constant change. That's when your other skill set comes in and you just kind of fix it all. 
with guests paying up to £50,000 for a 12-day holiday, the evening entertainment has to be fit for royalty. And there's now less than two days to go until the big final night show. Will John be able to fill the empty slot? The world's most expensive cruise ship has been docked in St. Petersburg, Russia. As evening closes in, the ship weighs anchor and begins to set sail for its final port of call, Stockholm in Sweden. Gearing up for a busy night of service is executive sous chef Frederick. So far we have four vegetarian, one jumbo shrimp, 12 beef, 13 fish, three spa, seven poultry, one pork chop, four salmon, five lamb chops, six dover sole, six filet mignon, five scallops and three lobster. This evening, the ship's flagship restaurant, the Compass Rose, will serve 350 meals in just two and a half hours. Everything hot plate, hot food. That's one every two minutes. So preparation is vital. Chef, can you check this one? One of the 25 galley chefs trying to impress Frederick is Rohan. Before I wanted to join the Navy, I have changed my mind and then I joined the galley. This coming December, it will be 15 years for me in the galley. Yeah, I have two titles over here, dedicated to my profession. In order to offer their guests the very finest and varied cuisine, menus on board the Explorer change daily. Today is menu number seven. So, menu number seven, this is the dish, coco vin. Tonight, Rohan's in charge of the coco vin. This will be the garnish, red crouton, pal onion, mushroom, then uh, fondant potato. We don't stop with the service. We are keep preparing, keep preparing, keep preparing. So for the one dish, it takes maximum, maximum 15 seconds. 15 seconds for one dish. Oh, it's a tough job. And if the pressure of learning a new dish every day wasn't enough... Tasting, let's go. All the meal choices must be tasted by Frederick an hour before service. Nice the tasting. Obviously, everybody likes the tasting, you know? Everybody does. OK, JC, let's go with the mushroom tart. As the tasting gets underway, some of the dishes fail to meet Frederick's high standards. OK, so the fish of the day? Careful with the saltiness, huh? It's a bit sharp at the beginning. OK? Let's go with the saffron risotto. So I told you, you need to be really careful with the consistency. Yeah? Don't forget that as well, the parmesan is bringing a lot of saltiness inside. Yeah? Okay, pasta, Michelangelo. Rohan's coco vin is last in line. What will the verdict be? Elsewhere on board, John has had a breakthrough. I've got to interview, now I've got to interview the guest who's playing the piano recital. He's been trying to fill the entertainment slot on the last night of the cruise. Can we test your mic now, please? We're going to leave it on. Testing, one, two, three. And Mackenzie, a guest on board, yeah. has come forward and offered to step in at the last moment. I headlined a, a show at the Tropicana in Atlantic City when I was oh, nine. Yeah? <laughs> Oh, really? For seven weeks, yeah. When you were what? When nine. You were nine years old? Nine years old. I gotta just try, like, um... What do I play? Uh... Maybe this Rachmaninoff. Oh, Rachmaninoff. But if it ends, like... Mackenzie looks like a good option. But John has a big decision to make. Letting a guest perform on the Explorer's main stage is something he's never done before. There is a huge risk, and this is why it'll happen one in probably a thousand, or even one in a million. What will John decide to do? 
Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Back in the kitchen, Rohan is hoping that his coquelin will hit the right note with Frederick. Coquelin? Chef, uh, coquelin with the fondant potato, garnish with pearl onion, red crouton, mushroom, and crispy bacon. Add the red wine, reduce it totally, then add chicken stock, then I put the chicken inside. Okay, sir. The food cannot be anything less than perfect. Very nice. On the sauce, the sauce is really nice. It's shiny. It's uh, thick. The consistency is what it should be, and it's really intense. It's really rich. Okay, that's exactly what it should be. Okay. okay. Thank you, sir. And so all the all French cooking, very nice. Rohan is a very relieved man. It was a nice tasting. I had a good comments for everything. In ten minutes, we will be on the break, and six thirty, we are coming back again. Don't mind me, madame. Cruise director John has made his decision. Mind the vase, don't hit the vase. There we go, interview. Now, what's my good side? He's going to take a punt on pianist Mackenzie, who's a guest traveling on the ship with his grandmother. And John's about to announce it live on the ship's television channel. Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Explorer Today show. We have something really, really special for you because the man I have next to me is a very well accomplished concert pianist, right? Tell us a little bit about yourself. <laughs> you studied at Juilliard. Right? Yeah, I've been at Juilliard for about six years, but I've been playing since I was four. Right. So I've played over 800 concerts since I started. Mackenzie's credentials are impressive. And also, this year, you got the Carnegie Hall Recital Award. Yeah, I played a couple times uh, when I was 11 and when I was 13. Yeah. Um, but this is my first actual being presented as a soloist in a debut recital. At 24, he sold out the coveted Carnegie Hall, headlined his own music festival, and also performed at the White House. I was asked by the cruise director, by John. He asked me uh, if I would be interested in uh, performing for more than just my grandmother and some friends that I made on the ship. Aside from what the White House and Carnegie Hall, which are kind of the top places, and I think now playing on the most luxurious cruise ship ever built is probably now at the top of the you know really wonderful treats. Well, I'm going to play for you some of my favorite uh, classical selections. Mm -hmm. uh, that includes music from some of the countries that we visited. I'd love to play one. But a classical pianist is a far cry from an Irish rock and roll duo. With such a dramatic change in entertainment on the last night of the cruise, what will the guest's verdict be? Well, if he's willing to, to do it, then let's, let's go for it. Mackenzie, thanks for coming on the show. Of course, thanks. The Seven Seas Explorer has sailed through the night and arrived at its final port of call. Stockholm in Sweden. Guests now have one final day and night before the end of their voyage. With the end of the cruise in sight and the prospect of a new journey beginning, it's a good time to clean the hundreds of windows on board. So how is going today? Good. <laughs> good? Yeah. Good progress. Staff Captain Pavle is overseeing the task. The maintenance of the ship, particularly washing and painting and coating, is important to protect the ship structure against the corrosion and to maintain the perfect appearance of the vessel. Suspended 20 meters in the air, the window cleaners move along a hand-pulled jib, whilst wearing a safety harness and the all-important protective goggles. Explorer, she is the ultra-luxury six-star ship, and she has to be maintained at her best. 
When we arrive to the port, uh, we look. Uh, we need to look impressive, and uh, we want to arrive in style. She needs to be always like a new ship. Well, thank you. It's the end of a cruise. I wanted to say, firstly, we've got some new people here and some people leaving. So I want to say the end of the cruise is also a time for staff meetings, where the different departments review the trip. So some people have got some cabin changes. Alex and Napoleon are all changing cabins, so your stuff is here. John is about to reveal what the discerning guests have said about his entertainment department, which include five different shows, three late-night musicians, as well as the resident orchestra. If the entertainment department got bad ratings, we'd have to look at the comments and also evaluate their performance as well. With standards so high on a ship of this stature, anything below 90% will be seen as a failure. In the 15 years I've been doing it, you've maybe had less talented singers, for example, or dancers who didn't quite hit the mark, and then you have to go down the, the road of maybe separating ways with those people, uh, and that can be difficult. And I wanted to quickly go over the ratings. Overall entertainment, got 90%, which is like, which means like 90% of the guests ticked excellent in the comment cards. World Rhythm's got 92%, Caesar 94%. Yeah. The results are a roaring success for John's entertainment team. And the Regent Signature Orchestra, let's see, just quickly, 94.5%. That's fantastic, honestly. But thank you, everyone. He'll be hoping for the same result tonight when professional pianist Mackenzie takes to the stage. As the world's most expensive cruise ship nears the end of its journey, there's time for passengers to reflect on their voyage. We've never been on the Regent before, and we've been on many cruises, but when you walk into this ship, it's completely different. It really is, I would say, beyond next level. You don't need your wallet. The drinks are included, the, the beautiful meals are included. The only problem sometimes can be when you're dancing at night, uh, getting up for the trip in the morning when you've got to <laughs> go, go. So I don't know where we're going to go from here. <laughs> Probably just have to come back. With guests back on board from seeing the Swedish sights, most of them get ready to bid farewell to the explorer including Michael and Jane, who will be travelling back to Sheffield early in the morning. Actually, she's marvellous. She's a marvellous packer. I'm not I'm just a saying that. Packer. She it <laughs> packs it better than John Lewis. It's absolutely fantastic. Good evening. Thank, Thank you. you. We're looking forward to it. Bags packed, they and the rest of the passengers head to dinner. But when they're finished, will they get an early night? or stay up to see Mackenzie's show. Backstage in the Constellation Theatre... So Ty is fine? Ty is great. Okay. It's very Michael Bublé meets uh, Rachmaninoff. There's just ten minutes to go before Mackenzie walks out on stage. Normally, our window's 45. OK. Especially on the last night, because they'll, no be, they'll be itching yeah. to get the luggage out. Me too. He's played the White House and Carnegie Hall. But despite Mackenzie's credentials, it's still a big risk for John. I'm nervous for you. Stop. <laughs> you all right? Break Let's a go. leg. Guests were hoping for a rock and roll sing-along. Well, ladies and gentlemen, hello. A very good evening and welcome to the final night of the voyage. Will a classical pianist hit the mark? Please put your hands together and welcome your fellow guest, Mackenzie Melamed. It's showtime.
So far, so good. And we're halfway through, and I think we're on to a winner here. We've given them everything, both barrels, and I think it's paying dividends, so I'm really, really delighted. They'll never forget this. In the audience are Michael and Jane. But as Mackenzie finishes his set... Ladies and gentlemen, one more time for the wonderful Mackenzie Melamed. <laughs> Do they agree with John? The guy tonight was fantastic. I can tell he plays at Carnegie Hall, honestly. We're so lucky that he was on board, weren't Absolutely. we? Absolutely. Very lucky. I mean, I can't pick a coffee cup with my left hand without shaking. How this guy can play that uh, music like that, it's just unbelievable, really. Yeah, it yeah, was amazing. Just... Hi, Hi, pleased to meet you. I've just been saying, absolutely fantastic. Thank in practice, you. you've done it before, haven't you? That's not your first time. Yeah, well, not even on the cruise ship. I've been lucky. I'd have a good trip. <laughs> yeah, back. thanks. Lovely to meet you, and thank you so much for tonight. It was very en enjoyable. Very glad it. you enjoyed it. Yeah. Loved every minute. It was a lot of fun for me. So. Another person who enjoyed the show is Mackenzie's biggest fan and travel partner, his grandmother. He's not only an exceptionally good pianist. He's a, a wonderful person, a very giving, loving person. <laughs> Am I talking about you? Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> to play in a great theater on a, a really wonderful ship, it can't really be better. Still great, still great. I gotta finish packing, I'm gonna be late. Late for packing. Mackenzie's performance brings an end to another eventful journey on the Seven Seas Explorer. As the guests begin to retire to their suites for a final night's sleep, John is proud as punch. This doesn't happen ever on any cruise I've ever been on in 20 years that I've thought a guest is good enough to perform on our main stage as the main show. So if you see them like standing up and applauding, it's overwhelming because they had such a good time. Tomorrow morning, guests will disembark. Their cruise officially over. But for John and the rest of the staff, a new cruise is just beginning. Bright and early, they'll be welcoming 750 new guests aboard the world's most expensive cruise ship. The cruise has gone really, really well. And for me, that's like, it's just great.